Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. We are glad that you are here. Today, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Our Mass intentions are for John and Brenda Shearer, Julie Gobin, Charles and June Field, Serapio and Maura Borello. Please stand. <clears throat> We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of the Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of His kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the fate of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our children's liturgy of, liturgy of the Word resumes today, so now we invite our little children to come forward so that the Word of God will be, may be proclaimed and explained at your own level of understanding. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was, one, was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness 
to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. of Israel sing His mercy endures forever Let the house of Aaron sing His mercy endures forever Let those who fear the Lord say His mercy endures forever and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my Savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just been it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, 
and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God and conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies and the spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still be. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and happy Easter. Would you like to greet each other good morning and happy Easter too?
We are uh, very happy today to be joined by our brothers and sisters who are preparing themselves for their confirmation. But part of the journey would be for them to receive their first communion today. So may I now ask our brothers and sisters to please stand up who shall be receiving for the first time their communion today. Perfect, thank you. You know very well that Easter is a 50-day season in our liturgical calendar, not just one day. While Lent is 40 days, Easter is 50 days because it is for us the greatest and the most important feast because for these 50 days, we declare boldly and loudly the central truth of our faith, that Jesus is risen and that he is alive and he is present in our midst. You know, to tell you honestly, if that is not true, if Jesus is not authentically raised from the dead and alive, everything we do as a church is nothing but one big colossal joke. If the risen Christ is not here with us now, then we become nothing more than just a social gathering. If Christ is not risen and present with us now, every prayer made in his name is meaningless. If Christ is not truly alive and present with us now, our liturgies, no matter how pretty they are, are just empty gestures and not efficacious. If Christ is not truly risen, as St. Paul says, our faith is in vain. Easter is so central a truth for us as a people of faith and as a church. And on the second Sunday of Easter, the, the, the Sunday declared by Pope John Paul II as the Divine Mercy Sunday, we have a very interesting gospel episode from John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and says, peace be with you. The greeting, peace be with you, is a customary Jewish greeting. Even today, if you go to Israel, for example, Jews will say to one another, shalom, which is the Hebrew word for peace. And that's a standard Jewish greeting. But we can observe that in this particular moment, that this greeting isn't ordinary. Because you will recall that three days ago before this episode, Jesus was betrayed by Judas. He was abandoned by all of his disciples and then crucified in a situation in which only one of them returned to be by his side, the beloved disciple commonly identified as John the Beloved. All the rest of them, the other 11, were not witness or were not witnesses to his crucifixion precisely because they were afraid for their own lives and they had abandoned their Lord. In that context, if you had abandoned someone who was your teacher for three years, if you had abandoned someone whom you had professed and believed to be the Messiah, if you had abandoned someone whom you had worshipped before and left him to die on a cross, and then when you encounter him again for the first time, I suspect a very natural human emotion is going to be fear or shame or remorse or regret for the fact that you've abandoned him. And this is on top of their fear for their own lives, for they might be the next target. But Jesus appeared to them and said, Shalom, peace be with you. I think it is important for us to understand not only what Jesus said, but why he said what he said. And we can only find one reason. The disciples needed it. Jesus had all the right to whip them, lash at them, and make them all the more feel guilty. But he did nothing of those. He said instead, peace be with you, because that was what the disciples needed. What is mercy? Mercy is putting the needs of others before ourselves. Mercy is when, even if people do not deserve it, you continue to love and forgive because you know that is what people need in order to be healed. And that is exactly what Jesus did to the disciples on that first day of the week. A week later, Jesus appears to them again. This time, Thomas, 
who a week before declared, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, week later, he is present. And once again, Jesus appears and says, Shalom, peace be with you. Notice that what Jesus did to the disciples, other disciples a week ago, Jesus also does to Thomas. He satisfies the conditions Thomas sets forth before believing. He allows him to see his hands, to put his finger into his nail marks, and his hands into his side. He doesn't question his unbelief. He doesn't make him feel bad for setting forth conditions. Instead, he lets him see for himself his wounds and his hands, precisely because this is what he needs. Mercy is once again putting the needs of others before ourselves. Even when you, ha when you have a choice not to, you do so out of love precisely because this is what they need in order to be healed. But there's a little detail in today's gospel that can be easily overlooked if you do not pay attention. Thomas is called Didymus, Aramaic for twin. On a previous occasion, in John chapter 11, verse 16, we are also told that Thomas was known as the twin. Why does John tell us this? After all, we never get to meet his twin. John, who is a selective writer, selective about what he will include in the gospel, how is this seemingly incidental detail relevant, and why is it included? Well, the short answer is, we don't know. John does not tell us. Some scholars say that Thomas is called the twin because his doubt is double than the other disciples. But of all the possible explanations that have been offered, the one that appeals to me the most is this. John wants to, his reader to ask the question, who is Thomas' twin? And the answer is me. I am Thomas' twin because, like Thomas, I'd like some proof before believing. Because, like Thomas, I join him in saying, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will refuse to believe. But like what he did to Thomas, and in fact to the rest of the disciples, Jesus will also give us what we need, mercy. Did you not notice, after treating them with mercy, Jesus breathed on the disciples. Allusion, allu whose allusion goes back to the very day of creation and said to them, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. At this very moment, my dear friends, Jesus institutes the sacrament of mercy, a.k.a. the sacrament of reconciliation, so that his grace of mercy and forgiveness won't be limited to the disciples, but will also be experienced by many generations, including us all today, because the truth is we all need healing and mercy is where we shall begin. A story told about Albert Einstein, the brilliant physicist of Princeton University during the 20th century. Einstein was traveling from Princeton on a train, and when the conductor came, came down the aisle to punch the passenger's tickets, Einstein could not find his. He looked in his vest pocket, in his pants pocket, in his briefcase, but there was no ticket. The conductor was gracious. Not to worry, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are, and I'm sure you bought a ticket. As the conductor moved down the aisle, he looked back and noticed Einstein on his hands and knees, searching under the seat for his ticket. The conductor returned to Einstein. Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. You don't need a ticket. I'm sure you bought one. Einstein arose and said, young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I am going. 
You know, sometimes in life, we don't know where we are going. And this happens even to the most faithful of us. But know that when you do not, when you do not know where you are going, you would know where you can begin to find yourself again. God's mercy in confession. Because healing begins where mercy abounds. Amen. Let us now stand and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now bring our prayers before the Lord who knows our every need. That the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals, married couples, and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience mercy, forgiveness, and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Adelina Amiana, Fernando Ayala, Margarita Lopez, Luis Espinosa, Bonifacio Casalmi, Maria Guadalupe Gutierrez, and the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in silence, we remember why we are here. The petitions that we want to lay before the feet of Jesus, the divine mercy. Our intentions for ourselves, for our families, and for those whom we promise that we shall be praying for. Father, you sent your Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. We ask that you hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and for the world through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Our first collection this weekend is for the daily operations of our church. 
And our second collection is for the DDF. We thank you very much for your generous love and support. sing praises to your name.
sing praises to sing praises to your name oh lord praises to your name oh lord for your name is great and greatly to be praised And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate a memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. i 
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. Uh, before I begin the announcements, let me once again congratulate our brothers and sisters today who for the first time have received their first communion. And uh, on April 27, they will be receiving their 
a final sacrament for Christian initiation, which is the sacrament of confirmation. So let us give them a warm round of applause. You know that faith is like a journey. It has its ups and downs. Today is definitely an up, a high moment for you. Sometimes you would find yourselves being down there, doubting and uh, uh, not trusting in the Lord, but you know where you can begin again. You can begin in sacraments where you can hear the, the voice of Jesus telling you, peace be with you. In the sacrament of reconciliation and in the Eucharist, you would hear Jesus saying to you, peace be with you. Uh, join us this uh, Sunday, April 7 at 1.30 p.m. to a Eucharistic procession from here, the church, all the way to going to the city center, going around the city center. Uh, that begins at 1.30 in the courtyard. And then ending here in the church, we'll have our multi-parish Divine Mercy Mass at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Our Book of Mass Intentions for May and June will open this Monday, April 8 at 8.30 a.m. in Maher Hall. Registration for Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow, Monday, April 8, at the Catechetical Office. Parents, make your child's summer fun and faith enriching. Our registration fee has been reduced from $40 last year to $25 this year. Because I understand the situation of families with children. With inflation, with everything going up, we want to make sure that we do not allow finances to be a hindrance for children to receive their catechetical formation. So uh, we have reduced it to $25 because we want to send the message of love and concern for our families here with young children. That is also the reason why we have Children's Liturgy of the Word. Other parishes are unable to offer that. Some parishes would also charge for that program for their child to be in Children's Liturgy of the Word. But we offer it uh, as a free service here in the parish because we understand our families with young children. I want to make sure that families with young children would find a hospitable home here at uh, St. Paul. Beginning this year, in fact, I have created a new position in our catechetical office called uh, extension program coordinator. This person handles children's liturgy of the word, OCIA, and other ministries that can be extended or other catechetical formation that can be extended to many more people in the parish. We are able to do that because of you, because of your generous support. Know that every dollar that you put in the collection basket whenever we say this is in support of our mission, that mission is basically a catechetical mission, our mission to give the sacraments to our people. And so with your support and your generous support, in fact, we are able to do so much more for our people. Volunteers are also needed for Vacation Bible School. Do you know someone who has left the Catholic Church and wants to come home? Our series for Catholics Returning Home will start on Tuesday, April 9th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in the Damien Center. Join the pastoral council and give sound advice or a pastor. Applications are available in the foyer of the church or in the parish office. Let us support our young adults who are in the courtyard for their lemonade fundraiser. Please see them after Mass. And finally, let us gather in fellowship today after Mass. Get to know your fellow parishioners. Coffee and donuts are available after Mass in Maher Hall. If you are new to the parish, your donut is on us. So, donut diet today. For more information, please read the bulletin, subscribe to our flock note, visit our website, spdacc.org. Thank you very much for being here and enjoy the rest of your day. Let us now stand. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an, to an eternal inheritance. 
And may you have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in the right manner on this earth. Be united with him in the heavenly homeland. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go now in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Yeah. 